So by now it goes without saying that this whole COVID-19 thing has really infiltrated its way into pretty much all walks of life. I was kind of realizing this the other day when one of Wifey Sauce's uncles hit me up and was like, hey, we've we've been having to stream our, our services for, for the church that we go to because of you know the, the, the mandated self-isolation thing. And I was like, okay, cool. And he's like, and the streams have been terrible. They've been stuttery, they've been lagging. They're pretty much impossible to watch. And uh, I was like, well, what are you streaming with? And he said, well, right now we're streaming with a 2015 Mac mini. And I, I just kind of scratched my head and went, okay, well, it's, it's time for an upgrade. That needs to change. I don't even know what configuration of Mac mini it is, but I can tell you right now, it doesn't even matter because the Intel chips in those systems only go up to, I think, four threads, which is just not enough horsepower for the stream they're trying to do, especially when you consider that these chips are also running on 22 nanometer Haswell architecture. Um, so we're gonna be building them a new live streaming system today. It comes out to roughly 1200 bucks when all is said and done. Of course, we could have built it cheaper. You always can for the most part, but I did want to give them enough horsepower for, for, for driving a quality stream while giving them some additional performance overhead so that this will be a system they can grow into for years to come. So with that said, uh, links to everything in the description below if, if you like spoilers, but if you wanna wait around, I'm gonna be talking about each of the parts individually as we go about the build. So let's get started. So the CPU I decided to go with is the Ryzen 7 3700X from AMD. This is an eight core, 16 thread CPU, and also you'll you'll forgive the one-handed attempt that I'll be making throughout this video. Uh, but this CPU is awesome. It is, uh, it, it's super fast. It's really good for streaming. The multi-threaded performance on it is awesome. And you know, we wanted to keep the price reasonable. That's one of the reasons why I didn't go with like a 3900X or even a 3950X. This is actually the same chip that I use in my personal streaming system for awesome hardware that we use to stream to the channel twice a month without any issue. With 16 threads on board, we're literally quadrupling, if not octupling, the number of threads on the church's existing PC. Plus, we've got that sweet 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture. I'm guessing that they would be using H.264 encoding with this chip, which it's going to be able to handle flawlessly. But as you'll see as we go about the build, they will have more options than just uh, live encoding with their CPU. Uh, we have the Tomahawk Max uh, Arsenal Gaming from MSI. This is a beautiful B450 motherboard, and it's, it's my top choice for something like this. If you're going to be using uh, the board for more than just gaming, Gaming, where VRM thermals are of utmost importance, then it's really hard to top this board for the price. I mean, look at these, look at these VRM heat sinks. They extend out, right? So they extend out from here, kind of hard to see because it's so thin, but they extend all the way out for additional surface area. There's like slats of them as well for more surface area. So they're really good at dissipating heat. I also like this board because it has a pretty hefty IO on the back. We've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one type A and one type C. We have four DIMM slots for our memory. And the memory we'll be using is Corsair's Vengeance LPX DDR4 3600 speed. It'll be fooled by the, the red dim on the box. These are actually the black models, as you can see right there. Usually when I'm when I'm building a system like this for a client and there's no specific requests for memory, I like to go with a low profile kit because it just offers more flexibility. You don't know if the client's gonna upgrade their cooler down the line. And this kind of just ensures utmost compatibility because of the lower clearance uh, heat sinks or heat spreaders that are on these things. Plus these are just overall really good performing dims. So we've got our eight core 16 thread CPU, 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory, and our beefy heat sink B450 motherboard. What's next? Ah yes, our case, of course, how could I forget? For our case, we have the NZXT H510i. This is a really nice, compact, mid-tower case for an ATX motherboard. I think this case kind of ticks all the boxes. It has full-size hardware support. We are gonna be occupying multiple PCI Express uh, by 16 slots on this board. So I wanted to make sure that we had a motherboard and a case that could accommodate that. It also comes included with two fans, which is nice. Let me let me take this side panel off really quick. I also love how easy these side panels are to remove. One screw, NZXT is doing it right. But we've got two included ARF 120 millimeter fans that are pre-installed at the rear for exhaust and the front is completely blank, but that's actually fine because we'll be installing the liquid AIO as you'll see in a moment. Uh, overall though, very smart, nice tried and true internal layout here, smart cable management. Quick shout out to NZXT for providing this case as well as some of the other parts that we'll be using in this build. Uh, it's kind of funny, I initially requested the H510 non-I, but I think they didn't have it in stock. So they sent me the I version, which has the integrated RGB strips. So we're, we're getting some bling here. Hopefully the church doesn't mind bling. Of course they could always disable it if they need to, but uh, the thought of walking into a random church and seeing a PC with RGB lighting in it just kind of makes me chuckle. Now, usually before I install the motherboard inside the case, I'll mount the CPU cooler first. So for that, we have the Kraken X53, also from NZXT. This is a very nice, very lovely 240 millimeter liquid AIO, and it's got the new rotatable water block, so you can kind of orient the NZXT logo any which way. We probably won't be utilizing that much since we have a more uh, orthodox uh, configuration here, but it is nice to have, especially if you're building in a case with like a rotated motherboard layout. But this is a very high performance liquid cooler and it should be plenty cool for our 3700X. <laughs>
All right, our power supply is the NZXT C650 watt ATX unit. Now this is actually a little bit more wattage than we really need, but I wanted to give them some overhead like I mentioned earlier. So if they did want to drop in some higher, uh, higher end or higher TDP components down the line a few years from now, they're gonna have more than enough headroom for that. It looks like a matte black finish, very minimalistic. I've actually never used this unit before, so kind of curious to see how it goes. Looks like we've got an 80 plus gold badge here. Nice to see that high efficiency, some black sleeve cables, that's always handy. And what looks to be a fully modular design. I'll probably end up plugging in some more cables than we really need anyway, just so that they're pre-wired in case they want to upgrade or expand things down the line. It'll make it a bit easier. This looks to be a zero RPM fan button. So if you want to go full silent operation, you can very well do that. Let's get this thing installed. So we've got the power supply installed. You can see I've already kind of done some cable management here. I plugged in pretty much all the cables we need except for our graphics card. Really quick one to point out that the H510i case that we're using here is the one that features the smart hub or whatever they're calling this smart device, which has uh, some LED connections. You've got two LED channels. Those are already wired up to a pair of Q2 RGB strips that are already pre-installed in the case. And then we've got three fan channels that can take uh, voltage regulated or PWM fans, all pre-wired, very nice to have. And this integrates nicely with the NZXT cam software as well. But uh, let's talk about storage here. We've got two SSD trays. We're going to populate one of them. I'm going to be using uh, this guy right here. This is the Team Group T-Force Delta Max. It's a 500 gig SSD, just a two and a half inch drive, pretty standard uh, SATA Rev 3. No fancy NVMe stuff here today, but you know what? Six gigabit per second is gonna be plenty fast for uh, the needs of this system. And they can always add more drives to the system very easily down the line. All right, did I mount this correctly? Yes, yes I did. Back on you go. Oh, I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Damn, you know, while I'm here, I'm actually gonna plug it in first and then mount it. Oh, look at that. It's like practically toolless. Like you technically don't even need to screw that in because it's got this little tab here, but I'm gonna screw it anyway. Next up we have our graphics card, which doesn't really need to be anything fancy to be honest, because if we're employing the CPU to do all of our heavy lifting for the live streaming, then we really only need a graphics card to output a video signal to a monitor. But I wanted to give them options. So here we have an MSI GTX 1660 Gaming X. And the reason I chose this card is because it's the most entry level GPU from Nvidia that supports NV encoder. This will give them the flexibility to choose how exactly they stream, whether they wanna use something like H.264 with the 3700X, or if they wanna process the stream with the GPU. You. So I'm leaving it up to them, but uh, there you go. The other nice thing about having a slightly nicer graphics card that's not like a super cheap $50 one or something is that you have more video outputs. This one has four of them as opposed to one or two on the cheaper cards. I'm sure you also noticed by now that this essentially turns our system into a gaming PC. Yes, we can now game at 1080p high settings pretty comfortably here with this graphics card, but I'm not exactly sure how much gaming action this thing's gonna see in a church environment, but who knows? I'm liking how this is turning out though so far. I mean, just aesthetically, very matte black. Oh. Okay. Where's where's the graphics card? GPU, where are you? There you are. Let's go. All right, down you go. All right. One-handed broskies. One-hander. Oh yeah. That's a strong thumb. Okay. And we got to remount this little back panel here, which also has two slots for uh, vertical GPU mounting. Although there's no riser cable included, that's purchased separately. I do have one on hand that I could spare for the build, but I'd rather keep the GPU fans further away from the tempered glass side panel. Come on, you piece of Plug it in, plug it in. All right, with our graphics card installed, we have one more final part to go, which is our capture card. This is the Elgato 4K60 Pro. It is awesome. I use one, here, look, there's one right here. There it is. It's in my personal system right there that I use for awesome hardware. Uh, it works beautifully, straight to the point, virtually plug and play, just gotta install drivers. To quote Jensen, it just works. It, it really does just work. Uh, I think the, uh, the church is currently using like a black magic intensity shuttle. Um, which I've never used personally, but the thing's like almost a decade old now, if not older. And from my experience, I've used Blackmagic capture cards extensively, and they are just not quite as user-friendly as these Elgato products, especially the new ones that uh, that have been coming out since uh, Corsair bought them a couple years back. They've just been really good, really reliable units. Aptly named, this supports up to a 4K 60 FPS signal, but I believe they're only streaming uh, 1080p 60 because that's all their camera currently supports. Down the line though, if they ever did want to try their hand at 4K 60 FPS streaming, they could attempt to do that with this card. And when that day comes, God be with them. Surprised I haven't cut myself doing this yet. Watch, I'm gonna do it just because I said that. Totally jinxed it. Ugh. Actually, you already know that I didn't do it because if I did, it would totally be in the thumbnail. Ugh. There we go. There she is. Ah, ain't she a beauty? Yeah, I don't know why I put this back on. I'm stupid. All right, here we go. El Gato. All right, moment of truth. Let's fire this guy up. Please turn on. Hey, oh. Sorry, totally forgot to remove this. There we go. 
Voila. Yes. Ooh, baby. Look at that. This is a this is a church PC, boys. It's almost it's almost too sexy for church. Can I get a video sig? Por favor. Give me that video sig. No. Where you at? Where you at? Come on. I probably have to reboot. There we go. All right, sweet. Now we are ready for Windows. Oh, I forgot I already installed Windows on this thing like months ago. I think, is it a clean install? Do I have anything on here? Doesn't matter, you guys don't care. But you do probably care about seeing this thing in action, maybe. You wanna see it in action? Let's give it a little test run, shall we? All right, peeps, our test stream is now live. We're streaming to YouTube right now at 1080p, 60 frames per second, with a bit rate of 10,000 kilobits per second, and we're using the H.264 encoder on our Ryzen 7 3700X. How's it look? You can't tell because this is a video, uh, so it's pretty much impossible. I, I threw up a second camera that's aimed at a monitor that's filming the live stream so you can kind of get an idea, but not really. Uh, it it's always hard to showcase these kinds of things in video, but I can tell you firsthand, it looks great, especially for YouTube. YouTube isn't the crispiest live streaming platform out there. Uh, if we were streaming to Twitch right now or even Vimeo, it'd probably look a little nicer, but it still looks really good and it's playing back really smoothly. There are no dropped frames, no stuttering, no lag. Everything's playing back as it should be. Perhaps the most beautiful thing about all this is that our system is doing all this without breaking a sweat. It's hovering right around 40% CPU utilization, 30% memory utilization, and our CPU temps are looking really good. We haven't gone over 64 degrees Celsius yet, and we've been streaming for an hour straight so far. So as I suspected, our 3700X is handling all this with flying colors, but what about our graphics card? Why don't we switch it over to NV Encoder and see how our GTX 1660 handles the stream? Okay, we've been streaming with NV Encoder for roughly 15 minutes now. Not nearly as long as we were streaming with H.264, but uh, the way things are looking, the temperatures and the utilization is probably not gonna change much from here. Now that we've offloaded the heavy lifting to the graphics card, our 3700X is now hovering below 10% utilization and the temps have come way down to the 30s and 40s. The hottest it's gotten since we switched over is 56C, so hardly warm at all. As for our GPU, we're hovering anywhere between 30 and 60% utilization and temps are looking really good as well, hovering anywhere from 46 to 48C. As far as performance goes, the stream is playing back just as smoothly as it was on H.264, I think the image quality is just a tick better. I mean, it's kind of hard for me to tell. Uh, I'd probably have to look at them side by side and I probably wouldn't notice anything unless someone had told me that we had switched uh, encoding methods, but NV encoder might look a hair sharper than H.264 if, uh, if I had to pick one or the other. Of course, this could just be a placebo effect. I'm not exactly sure. Closing things out here, I'm really happy with how the system turned out. This is a huge step up over their 2015 or late 2014 Mac mini, whatever the heck it is. Uh, it totally runs circles around it and I think it's gonna perform very well for them for many years to come. But you guys let me know what you think. Feel free to check out uh, the links below in the description in case you're interested and toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Also get subscribed for more tech content on the way and check out bitwit.tech, our merchandise store. We've got shirts, we've got hoodies, we've got all the same stuff we had last week and the week before that. Go ahead and check it out. It's a great way to help support what we do here at Bitwit. Apart from that though, guys, thanks so much again for watching. Have a good one and I'll see y'all in the next video.